So we're actually, we'll not talk so much about dinners uh, tonight, <laughs> but we will show you a few cute pictures of dogs uh, because like babies, they are quite hard to resist and everybody likes them. So, um, yeah, so we're going to talk to you about our journey that we've embarked on with Tukje some time ago and um, essentially starting with, um, you know, a challenge of how do we really build a deeper connection with our consumers. Today, you know it, right? I mean, we're all consumers. They are behaving differently. We are behaving differently. We're interacting very differently with, with the world because we're constantly on. We have multiple devices. We have a shorter attention spans. We basically are on screens. This means tons of data. And to be honest, I never really was missing data in my life, but now, you know, this data obviously uh, means a lot of new things for us. It's just that the challenge is still the same. It's hard to absorb it all. And uh, with a lot of the data being available to us, we also have the, uh, we, are, we are lucky that also technology and all of the advancements of different capabilities, digitalization is allowing us in insights to tap into this data. But for us, the challenge wasn't again to look at the data and see the consumer again through the data. We actually wanted to build a direct and deeper connection mm -hmm. with our consumers, with the human who is the consumer, on a deeper and more meaningful level. Um, yeah, and so, you know, to be honest with you, there was not a lot that we were missing in terms of insights overall. That's at least what we thought. But because we wanted to explore this new approach and we wanted to actually transform how we think about insights, how we do insights at Mars, uh, we decided to basically embark on a very broad, uh, broadly defined brief of let's just understand how the human behavior impacts pets, right? What, they, what the human um, is choosing based on their mood, their moment, their life stage. What are they choosing to feed their dogs? How do they care about dogs uh, or cats? How do they really interact within the category? And then also uh, within that, we wanted to discover maybe are there any opportunities that we've missed? Maybe there are some opportunities that maybe we could look at differently. Uh, maybe there's something that we didn't really consider and now we should. And then finally, because transformation doesn't really just mean means tools, it means a behavior change. We wanted to see how the business can now really put the consumer back at the center of what we do. And this is maybe not a surprising statement for you, but what I felt we were doing mostly is focusing very internally on what is our margin, how we're going to win, and does this really make sense against you know, our competitive set? Really, hardly ever we were asking ourselves, what does the consumer think about this? Is this relevant and meaningful? And on top of that, we also wanted to shift the paradigm for once and for, for all of, you know, instead of pushing the insights into the business to make our business decisions wiser, to having the business pull the insights from us and be more proactive about it and do it in the right time and in the real time. Fantastic. And that's probably a usually underemphasized part, right? A lot of our, as like data scientists or researchers, we focus a lot on getting data a teeny tiny bit more accurate, right? Like just get it better, better significance, etc. And potentially we don't spend enough time thinking about how the organization is going to absorb this information. How are we going to actually get everyone across the entire business be able to use it? And then you end up with like disproportional situations where you just do like a very quick research or someone goes to their neighbor who is also a consumer, gets a video, and that one video sticks in everyone's mind. That's not really research, but why does it stick in people's mind? It's relatable. I can remember a video. Remembering numbers is a lot harder. So the focus that we had with Natalia was that we are not only going to build a better connection with the human with a platform, but how can we make this very usable, basically, across the entire business? Now, we, we are very proud to introduce you to Peggy. So Peggy stands for? Pet Engine for Growth. 
and a bit, you know, cuter version. Instead of Peg, we called it Peggy. But Peggy is like a person in your business. So if you are in marketing, branding, you yeah. can come to Peggy. You can ask questions to Peggy to speak to you. Again, coming back to putting a human face even to the research tool itself. So what we did with Peggy is that across different markets, we started observing real consumption behavior, purchase moments, but even just the moments that you spend with your pet. It doesn't have to be feeding. It doesn't have to be actually giving some treats or caring. It might be just actually caring and loving them in that moment, right? So we start observing those moments. The changes we have made were going, as Natalia already said, there was no shortage of data. <laughs> there was more data than you can possibly you know, ask for. But what we changed is that rather than one point in time research, which is static, we moved on to an observational platform where it's flowing, it's dynamic, it's ongoing, right? So we never stop talking to the consumer, we never lose the connection with them. Instead of asking pre-framed questions, which is usually the dilemma we all have, like shall I actually go speak to consumers with a few videos, which is rich, or do I do like a massive multiple choice survey with thousands of people, but I lose the connection with the people? This is the biggest difference now that we have with technology. You don't have to make that choice anymore. So you can actually go and speak to people in their own words, but we still do it in size of tens of thousands. And thanks to using you know, modern AI technology, we can still quantify the results from that. And finally, maybe the most importantly, it's not just what people claim and how they justify why they did what they did, because we know a lot of our decisions when it comes to our babies or our pets are not actually that rational. Instead, we capture that mood, that emotion right in that very moment. Now, very quickly, how it all works. Basically, our pet parents constantly speak to us during different moments in their lives. And they basically share with us, you know, even when they are having some ice cream in the evening, it doesn't always have to be about their pets only because we want to understand the human in its all complexity. That goes into a single database where we analyze all that data using natural language processing and deep neural networks. There's a lot of big words. What it really means is that rather than having to frame the questions before we ask, which means we are already making a lot of assumptions. Instead, we engage in a conversation with the consumer, right? So you tell us how are you feeling, what's going on in that moment, what are you up to in your own words. And then the quantification comes after the fact, not before the fact. We can then do topic modeling using deep neural networks to be able to understand what you're actually saying to us and quantify. And remember, we are talking about mega scale here. Tens of thousands of these moments being captured all around the world all the time. Now, here's the challenge. This is what a Python algorithm looks like, right? So you have all these like PhDs in physics and mathematics and getting into that data and playing with it. You know, I, I can't deal with this. And how am I going to make any insights, any business decisions from this? So we have to bring it back to reality. We have to bring it back to something that any marketeer, any brand manager, Insights are already you know, in the game anyway, but even beyond insights, how can they engage with it? So we keep it simple, we keep it dynamic and playful, hence all the personalization. Now here's the most important difference between going and getting 20 videos and trying to put a human face on research versus doing your entire research, consumer research, with that human connection and then quantifying the results to the extent that, let's say you have a demand space, which Natalia will talk about in a second. Let's say you have manic mornings as a demand space, and you can go down because we have about 50,000 data points behind manic mornings. You can go to the SKU level and understand which exact flavor, which exact product is under-indexing, over-indexing, and what is the reason for that at a quantified level. Because data is unstructured, it allows you to be able to go beyond your immediate questions. Because our challenge is always, you don't know what you don't know. If we always frame our own research, if we write briefs and we ask specific questions to consumers, we never really give a chance to the consumers to directly speak back to us. That's right. So obviously, we want it simple. Um, 
and we wanted to have an impact. So what, we did, what, what did we really accomplish with, with this approach? So like I said earlier, you know, this wasn't about one project. This was about transformation. And the transformation wasn't about a tool, and it wasn't also about an approach to doing insights differently. It was really about what does it really help us do, and how can we really accelerate our expertise about the consumer, about the human and their pet, into the business by leveraging these tools and technologies that enable us to connect there. So the first thing that was really eye-opening for us is that, you know, because we went with a quite, you know, maybe a little bit um, naively structured question, let's just see what the behavior is and how it impacts pet, uh, we were able to uncover a lot more insights that we were asking. We uncovered what we didn't know. We also uncovered what we didn't know we didn't know. <laughs> and, you know, one of the things that obviously was coming out of this um, platform was that, you know, underlying it all, the human and pet relationship is all about affection. We knew that. What we didn't realize is there are really many aspects to what that affection really means. What are the different moments that drive different affections? What do those moments actually um, drive in terms of behavior, how it relates back to the pet, the choices, the branding, even memories about my experience. And we were able to quantify those unique moments and build them into spaces that now allowed us to think about growth opportunities, different innovation ideas, positioning for our brands, and even, you know, things like how we relate and how we reach consumers, how we really talk to them, and then maybe where, right? So different channels, different maybe sub-channels, and really thinking more holistically about, you know, those growth spaces in a, in, a, in a different way. And again, starting only from the same insight that we had for years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Another thing that was very interesting is that, like I said, we didn't ask this, but all of a sudden, because of this insight and foresight, we were able to now look at pet owners and their affection uh, through their lens, the human lens of, you know, every pet parent has a different situation. They're in different life stages. They're different generations. Mm. They're different pet parents going through different things. And again, that added additional lens for us to think about, you know, how our brands are showing up. Are we alienating anyone or are we really reaching everyone with a message that resonates and also with a product that resonates and fits what they want and what they expect. And then finally, you know, we know that pet care is not isolated and people have just broader lives. And so we were, again, not asking about it, but we stumbled upon bigger, broader topics and, and issues that were important to pet parents. They were thinking about sustainability, environment, you know, tolerance, diversity, etc. All of that somehow still impacts pet care and pet category, the brands, how they show up, how they build against those bigger, broader topics. And we were able to inspire ourselves and reconnect again on these very important purpose-led issues that we can then um, can leverage to become more relevant and show up as we stand for something and have an agenda beyond just food. And then finally, you know, I talked about transformation for the purpose of changing also our behavior internally. And the biggest thing that we were able to accomplish by building this platform and thinking about the consumer as a human and putting that human back uh, in the middle of the business before the decisions are being made was to provoke and inspire new actions, new transformations. And the biggest thing is that, you know, now the business is not just waiting for an answer. They're asking proactively, mm. they're putting hypotheses in front, and they're wanting to start with the consumer first. And, you know, I always caveat this with the fact that my budget never gets cut, at least for the last 12 <laughs> months, and that is a huge achievement given my career experience. And that only shows you that, you know, when the business is re-energized and understands that, wow, like we rediscovered consumer again, things can actually be moved and the mountains can be shifted. Fantastic.
So that's really what we wanted to cover with you for today. Absolutely, thank you so much. And um, just to leave you a few, a few final thoughts. So I think there were a lot of sessions about behavior. I think it's very clear to every single person in this room now, that's not optional. That's just the way we do research now with observations, with behavior. The more important thing is that the more we can give the control back to the consumer, so they actually call the shots in terms of what they are sharing with us, when they are sharing with us in their own words, the more than we can discover what we already don't know. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, um, so everyone, you've still got time to submit any questions via the app. In the meantime, I'll run through the ones that we have. Um, how frequently do you interact with participants? Is it daily? Is it weekly? Or Absolutely. Shall I yeah, take go, that one? Go, go. Um, so multiple times a day, yeah. even. So and it wouldn't that's a thing seeing them as a human rather than a consumer. So it's not going to be like, oh, please go to a supermarket and buy some cat food for us so we can see what's going on. We don't do that. Instead, what happens is that when you are putting your skin cream in the morning, when later you are spending some time with your dog, in the evening when you are having your dinner, please keep sharing these real life moments with us. So it can be multiple times in a day. Okay. And what else do we have? How long do participants stay active and participate? Um, do you want me to? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tell so <laughs> absolutely. Um, so that completely depends because we also churn some of them over time. You don't want to get the bias of having the same people in the, in the platform for too long. Yeah. At the moment, we are still a young company. We are a five-year-old company. And we still have people who've been with us for more than five years. So I can't tell you a final number yet. Ask me again in five years' time. Um, but on average, um, we have 65% user retention on an annual basis. Okay. Uh, which languages does your platform work in? In our case, in PEGI, it's all in local languages. So whichever country we are active in, the platform works on all languages. When the results come back to the dashboard, it's both showing in English, yep. but also still in local language. Okay. Because if you're going to use it for communications and mm -hmm. like media buying, etc., you still want to see yep. the words. I don't yep. know, if, Natalia, if you want to add to that. No, yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, we operate on a regional level, so everything needs to be translated, and then everybody speaks French. Uh, imagine that. But, yeah, but it's important for us to obviously enable local teams, so we keep both, yeah. um, I guess, versions alive. Okay. Um, do participants, are they able to interact with each other on the platform? That's a great question. We've been talking about that. Well, actually, what's really, you know, the way I look at solutions is that, you know, I think, and it's really amazing when agencies do that, it's all about collaboration and finding synergies across the different tools. And so we were able to actually explore within our platform is embedding different solutions mm -hmm. from other agencies and vendors to have interaction, yep. to let's say create a quick focus group or to do even a quick survey that we can embed because we want obviously leverage the power of our panel uh, but then obviously have specific questions that are coming up because we're seeing something mm -hmm. interesting in the data. And that's the feature from our perspective as well. As a platform, our job is to be able to integrate lots of different types of um, solutions you want to use into a single source mm. data. Yeah. So when we want interactions amongst RBs, as we call them, we don't do that, but there are partners we work with who would do that. Okay, and we've got one final question, which is do you change or iterate the questions along the way? Forth. Yeah, ab absolutely. Yeah, a, a lot. So um, you start, so we have a fixed set we start with. The, there's a lot of linguistic and psychological theory behind it, why we ask the way we ask. But as you discover a new category, as you discover new variables that are really determining behavior, yeah. you might want to go deeper on those. So then every six months at the moment, I think, every, every six months we are doing a full review and some questions get dropped. If you know your questions might get yeah. added, so it's quite dynamic. Okay, we've not got long left, but I think you might be able to answer this one quickly. Which share of your customers do not take part? Say it again. Which share of your customers do not take part? What does that mean? Um, <laughs> I, I, think, that I think that they might mean... Like the bees, maybe? The bees? Anyone wants to resubmit that question quickly, they're more than welcome um, to. I read it without reading it properly, to, sorry. Yes, what percentage of customers do not? 
I'm guessing that, that you mean the bees, uh, as in customers, as in probably consumers, but correct me if I'm wrong. So in any given study, there would be always hundreds of thousands of people who are not participating. It might yeah. be not just be right for them. In those cases, we don't even show it to them. Mm. Yeah. So let's say you are a 13-year-old participant. Our youngest users are 13, and there's a lot of stuff you are never going to even see in your feed yeah. because you just don't qualify for it. Yeah. Thank you both thank so, you so, so much. much for today. Yeah. Thank, thank you. 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 Th